Hello, hello. Um, welcome back. I am so excited to talk about this video and just for the new people, this channel is dedicated to helping women feel seen and thrive in their calling by simply discussing daily trials and wins as a Christian wife. So if you're interested in that, hit the subscribe button. And going forward, we are talking about things basically I wish I would have known before trying to get pregnant. I never knew I needed this video before trying to get pregnant, which by the way, I am. Um, I'm 12 weeks, 12 and a half weeks, not there, not quite. Um, I don't know if you can see my belly. Let's see, camera's kind of hard. You can see it a little bit if I stand, the tights on. But yeah, I have a baby, baby bump right now. Um, but anyways, like I said, I didn't know these things before trying to get pregnant. And so when we went into the process of knowing we wanted a kid and that we were ready, I got really discouraged and um, just went through some, I guess, some struggles because I didn't know what to expect. And that's why I wanted to do this video. It's not a video on here's all these extra tips to help you <laughs> conceive necessarily. It's more so just like what I didn't know, what to expect, um, and there are a few helpful tips in here, but we'll just get right onto it. Number one is it takes time or it can take time. This was my biggest one that I didn't realize. And so when my husband graduated and we were ready to have kids, I thought that summer I would be pregnant. Like, oh, okay, fine. You know, one month happened. I was like, well, oh, well, you know, like two months, it'll definitely happen. Two months happened. <laughs> I was like, well, I don't know. <laughs> Three months happened. And then I was like, what is this? Like, I fully, like, guys, naive fully expected to be pregnant right away and that just was not my story and then when I started actually looking it up um I learned that it can take you know around three to six months to get pregnant for some it can take up to a year to get pregnant and then some other people have to go to doctors and do extra things to even be able to have a child. And so really it differs so much to each person, but if you're in the stage where you're about to try or you know you will some point in the future, just don't, don't expect the worst. <laughs> that should be a tip. Don't expect the worst to happen. But if it doesn't happen immediately, know that that's actually pretty normal <laughs> and that it's okay and it'll be fine. So that was the first one. Second one is don't compare your stories to others. This one's hard. This one's so hard. When you finally feel like you're ready to be in the stage to have kids and you've been waiting or maybe you haven't been waiting that long. It's, I don't know everyone's story, but to not compare what you're going through to others, because let me tell you, there will be plenty of people, well, in my case at least, that will have the story of like, oh, well, we didn't even try, or like, we got pregnant, or oh, well, when we tried, we got pregnant first try, and they don't mean anything by it, but you're like, it can make you be like, oh, well, is something wrong with me? Like, why did they have a baby so easily or get pregnant so easily, and why am I not? Or... Or it could be the opposite. You could have people be like, yeah, which these stories I obviously didn't hear enough of, but you could hear the stories that were a lot harder of getting pregnant. And then you could get fearful. You're like, oh, what if that's me? What if, what if I can't have a kid and it's been two months and now it's probably going to take five years, you know? Don't compare your stories to others. You don't know what God has in store for you. You literally have no control over that. And so comparing your story to others is just not, it's not gonna help you any. So 
Here's my third one. I don't have it by me. I'll actually link it below, but this was super helpful for me and it's to get an ovulation kit. So when we first started trying, I basically just had an app that told me when I should, keyword, should be ovulating. And that's what I went off for many months. And um, it wasn't working. <laughs> and so I had people tell me about the ovulation kit and I just in my head, I was like, Psh, we're not gonna need that because in my head, I was like, it's gonna happen immediately. It's gonna be so easy. But in reality, oh, I wish I could remember it. Thinks, oh, I think it's 12 to 24 hours is how long you ovulate. Like that's the slot of getting pregnant. 12 to 24 hours is when your body <laughs> can get pregnant in a month or normally in a month. But that's a pretty small door. And so if you don't time it out right, then it can just be easily missed. And so I didn't think I would need a kit, but when I got the kit is when we got pregnant. And so when I got the ovulation kit, it basically tells you, I don't, I'll have to, I'll put it right here, your something levels. <laughs> and when it peaks is when you're supposed to be ovulating or it's really close to where you're ovulating. And I found out that when, when I got that kit, that my ovulation date was like, I can't, it's, it, it was at least five days, five, I don't even want to say to seven days different than the other app I was using. <laughs> like it was so different. And I'm like, okay, well, that at least makes sense in my head now because I was using this app and according to the app, everything was lining up right. But when I used the kit, I was like, these dates are two completely different dates. <laughs> and so that just really helped me. Um, if you're not in a rush, you may not need it or you don't need it. You know, it's up to you. Um, but if, I don't want to say time it because you literally can't time it. You don't know God's plan. But if you're wanting to have a kid in the next three months, six months, whatever, it's not going to hurt to get a kit. I got it off Amazon. It was super cheap. And it just kind of helps you know what's going on in your body. So the fourth thing is tell people you trust and don't do it alone. So when we first started trying because it was going to happen so easily, I didn't want to tell anyone because I just wanted it to be a really big surprise. And then as a few months passed by, I was like, well, Maybe I'll tell a few people. And then eventually I was just like, well, I'll just tell people that we're trying <laughs> or that our next step is kids because in my head it would have already happened. And I was like, if I don't tell people, I don't know how long this could go. And it can be tiring or discouraging at certain times. And so I told my church and See, man, like I said, I told family and stuff, but I had people in my church and community group praying for me. And then I had other friends who are closer with, like, check in on me. And that just, it just helps. Like, you're not meant to do life alone. And especially as a Christian, you're supposed to have um, really sisters. I don't want really brothers in Christ to encourage me in that. But sisters in Christ who can come alongside me and be like, hey, we're praying for you. Or, hey, like... Um, I'm really sorry that it didn't happen again this month, but, and then can encourage you or just be there with you or give you tips. I had more tips given from some of my Christian friends and that was fine too. Like I was like, oh yeah, like, I don't know. I wasn't all into research or looking it up because I didn't think I would need it. Um, but it, it helped just hearing other people's stories too. Not comparing stories, <laughs> but just having other ladies there say, hey, I've been here. Hey, it took me this long too. Or like, hey, I get it. I'm praying for you. And so don't do this alone. At least tell someone else like who can help be there for you and support you. Lastly, um, don't make getting pregnant be your source of joy. I guess I've just forgotten to mention it by this point. I think it really only took us five months get pregnant. I think we started trying in 
May or June, and then we got pregnant in October. And so when I say that now, that doesn't sound like very long, like five months, like not that long. But going into it, thinking I'd get pregnant in one month, you know, like I thought I would be five months pregnant and not just starting at that point. And so well, it took us five months. But if you make getting pregnant be your source of joy, getting pregnant is going to be unjoyful for you because seeing negative tests again and again and again and again is just disheartening and discouraging and um, I wish I, I had pictures of this getting negative tests but my phone broke and I lost them all and I'm really sad I lost them because this was something else that people didn't really talk about <laughs> that no one really talked about like or I didn't know really anyone in my life who talked about the process of getting pregnant and going through the negatives before you got to the happy positive and it was the month before I got pregnant and that month I was like positive I was like this is the month I'm gonna take some selfies before like this is it like I was I was sure and then it, I, it wasn't <laughs> and I was so sad like tears like so sad and just disheartened and and don't hear me say this like you have a right to be sad if it's negative but if you're not making getting pregnant be your source of joy then getting a negative is going to be okay because you trust in God's plan you trust that no matter what happened God has you that you have an eternity with him that all of your hope is in him your identity is in him and so if that is where your foundation is. A negative test won't rock you. It may make you sad and that's okay, but it's not gonna rock you. But if you're making everything be like, well, life's good, but if I was pregnant, it'd be great. Or, well, look at all these people who are getting pregnant or have families and I just wanna be with that. Like, if you do get the negatives, it's gonna be really hard <laughs> to get through them. And I feel like your your life is just going to be like a, a cloud of darkness because you're constantly waiting for a positive, which to you is like your everything, your happiness. And then when it doesn't happen, you're back to like, well, we got to try again. We'll see. I don't know. What if it doesn't happen? What if all this? And so all that to sum it up, like be excited for a journey, the journey of getting pregnant and having kids, but just don't make it your everything. Just don't. That really is the main thing that I just wanted to talk about in this video. And I hope it encourages you or at least informs you for when that time comes for you. And I know it's hard to say like to trust in God through the whole process, but you kind of just have to. And that goes back to your source of joy. I could do a whole video on this. But trusting God and getting your source of joy from Him will change everything. And whether you can have a kid in one month, a year, or never, you can still have joy in the Lord. So, yeah. Until next time, I will be doing more videos over babies and marriage and life as a wife. Bye, guys.